So one of the reasons many of us fell in love with video games in the first place was it was a really interesting way to tell stories, right? Um, some games tell elaborate stories with a ton of verbiage, and some games really didn't use any verbiage at all. If you think back to those early NES games, think of Metroid. Think of in-game verbiage in the original Metroid. There was none that I can think of. It was all just the atmosphere and the suggestion and what you read in the manual. And the title screen, I guess. Um, but but that's really it. There was there was not a lot of verbiage on the screen. There wasn't a lot of characters talking to you. You didn't talk to a computer terminal or whatever. And part of that, of course, is because the NES memory is so limited that in order to keep track of all the characters that you'd need in order to, to tell a story, uh, characters, text characters that you need to tell a story, um, it takes up a lot of memory. Uh, games that used a lot of text like Dragon Warrior Final Fantasy, they tended not to have a lot of, you know, difficult collision detection and things like that so their collision maps could be really compressed down which gave them more room for 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 text now our engine does a lot of things so we have to sort of split the difference making it available to do text but you know probably not as much as dragon warrior 4 um, at least not by default not without getting into the code under the hood but i'm going to show you guys how you can set up text and how you can do text boxes uh the easy way uh, using 4.1.0. Uh, first of all, I'm going to make a monster that is a guy who talks to me. So if I open up my pixel editor and I go, you know what? I'm going to actually copy this wizard here. I'll copy this one. Control C. I'm going to open up my monsters. My, uh, my monsters. Right there. And I'm going to Control Shift V to put them there. And I'm going to save that real quick. And I'm going to make a new monster and he'll pop up in just a second. Just a second. There he is. Okay. So I'm going to make a two by two monster. And there he is right there. Um, and I can set his palette on the actual screen. I'm going to go into object details and inside of his details, I'm going to make him of NPC type. I'm not going to do anything else with him because he's just going to sort of stand there. Um, his actions, I'm not going to do anything. And I'm going to add a bounding box and be a little bit generous with this bounding box since he's only colliding with my player. Uh, so now I've got an NPC object. I'm going to save him as NPC and save new. And I'm going to make a new monster group with just NPCs in it. And I'm going to call it just NPCs save. And now I can go to my overworld. And I'm going to go to the second screen here. I'm going to put them right here. So I got to go to screen info, day monsters, just NPCs. And let's see, what does he look like? Yeah, I'm going to use the monster pal form. There we go. I'm going to right click and place monster one place an NPC right here. So now this guy is going to talk to me when I approach him and press the B button. But in order for that to happen, I've got to do a few things. First of all, I've got to go to HUD and boxes and I've got to place my actual box. Now here's a cool thing I can do. If I want to like place it around where my NPCs will be on the screen, this screen is four, three. If I look up here, it's four, three. If I go to my HUD and boxes, I can use 4.3 as my demo screen, and I can see where my sprites would be. So um, maybe I'll put my text boxes here, and I'll just make sure to keep all my NPCs always below that point. And I'll set that to my text box. Bam, like that. They're going to disappear anyway, but you know, just as a general rule, let's keep them out of the way of the objects. Um, I could make this huge text box and take up most of the screen. I generally want to keep it away from the HUD because right now the HUD will not automatically re rewrite over the top when the HUD box disappears. Um, with the Nest, there is no layers. So I can't put a text box on a top layer like in a modern engine. Uh, really what's happening is it is literally erasing the tiles underneath, drawing the HUD tiles, and when it goes back away, it redraws the original tiles that were in place. So it's it's sort of complex in order to get it like, what if there was a locked door that you unlocked and then the HUD box appeared? Then it has to remember to draw the unlocked door when it restores itself. So it gets kind of complicated with all the different possibilities that can happen. Um, so that's another reason why we just keep it out of the HUD to make our lives a little bit easier. Uh, so now that I've got a HUD box, I need something for him to say. So I'm going to go to text. And you can see now that I've drawn a HUD box, it shows me exactly where the safe area is. And if I want, I could put a little bear, little uh, little padding on each side and just say, hey, you got 
text boxes working. Neat. And it's all going to be capital, so I don't know why I did that. And I'm going to call this uh, text one or something like that. And I'm going to keep my end action none. And so now when I go to my overworld, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to go to text groups. And you can see I've got a new group, and I'm going to call this first group or something like that. Um, and this is what first group is. This is what all the NPCs would, would read, text one. Text one, text one, text one. If I wanted the second NPC to read text two, it would read this, but I don't have anything there. So I'm going to keep it that for now. Um, keep it that for now. Sorry. Okay. And now I'm going to go to my overworld, go to where I've got that NPC set up, go to screen info, and now I can tell it, okay, what text do I want to use? And the only one I have set up is that. Cool thing, if I want to see what this guy is going to say, I can right-click, Edit, Monster Placement Details. And inside this dialog, check it out. This is the one that's actually enabled, this guy right here. And this is what he's going to say. So I know what he's going to say. And the B button right now, currently, is uh, going to be the activation code for this. Now, let's, let's play this real quick and see what happens. I'm going to walk over here and I'm going to, oh, if I can get by my monster, I'm going to walk over here and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to press the B button and nothing happens. Why did nothing happen? Well, I never set a control to activate the text box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it that I need an input for when I press the B button. I'm going to go to my scripts and just like I added these movement scripts, I'm going to add a script for input scripts. I'm going to add a active B button activates text box right here B activate text box and if I look at that script this is what it's gonna do I don't have to know much about this I just need I can take a look at it I'm gonna go to my input editor and I'm going to say in my main game if I press the B button it's gonna run the activate text box text box script oops I didn't actually, oops, let's stop that. Um, I need to tell it to actually add the script. So now, in the main game, if I press B, it's going to activate the text box. And now I'll come over, press the B button, Hey, I got text box working neat and press B again and it all restores and I'm back to playing my game again. So it's that easy to start adding a story to your game and you can be really creative on how you use that text box. Um, you could have it all along a black background and make it a cut scene that's telling a story. Um, you can be creative and, and really think out different ways that you can use text boxes like that to do different things. A menu could pop up. Uh, uh, eventually, we're going to have you know a selection screen that you can select choices that are on that text box. Um, it could be your credits. It could be the name of the town that you're in could show up on the top corner of the screen if you didn't want to use it for actual uh, speaking and talking verbatim to characters. So uh, that, I hope that gives you some idea of how to use text and dialogue in your game and how to uh, activate it using the B button. Uh, and next, we're going to actually start looking a little bit at how to edit scripts.